What is up guys, Connor here back with another video on the Celica, of course. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to do an oil change. It might be basic, but some people wanna know. Let's get right to it. All right, for everyone new to my channel, this is my 2ZZ, it is supercharged, but if you guys don't have a supercharged 2ZZ, everything is gonna look pretty similar in the video. Uh, underneath, it's the same exact side, I didn't do anything different. We're gonna start here with the dipstick. If you guys don't know how to read your oil, this is how you're gonna do it. You're gonna take it out, wipe it off, put it back in. If it looks sludgy, if it looks dark or thick, it's time to change your oil. Underneath, you're gonna actually deal with some plastics. I'm gonna insert a picture right now. You're gonna to wanna to take those off, it's just 10 millimeter bolts. I don't have any of those uh, standard. I don't also have a front end right now. I was doing some other maintenance on the car and figured it would be a great time to actually just do an oil change. That's why I'm kind of doing it. What you're gonna need for today is an oil pan, something to put your oil into. Um, you can recycle these at any automotive store like AutoZone. You can just take it to and they'll empty out your oil. You're gonna to want to use a socket set with a 14 millimeter to get your drain plug off, 10 millimeter to get off those plastics. Oil, I use 5W30, I use Mobile One that's full synthetic, um, and a Toyota oil filter. Now, you don't need to use Toyota, but Walmart has actually partnered with Toyota and they're selling these things now, so might as well just get the OEM one from Walmart. And that's it, it's super easy to do, so we're just gonna go ahead and hop right into it and get underneath this car. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna move the oil pan underneath our car and make sure that it's gonna cover the drain plug. Now, underneath your car, once you get it jacked up safely, put two on it, one on each side of the car. Underneath, you're gonna see your oil pan. It's this black thing that I have the flashlight on. It's a little thicker. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me brighten this up a little bit. What you guys are gonna do is you're gonna take this and on the back side, you're actually gonna have a drain plug and I'll show you where that's at right now. All right, we are now underneath the silica on the passenger side. This is our oil pan right here. You're gonna see it's this big square black block right here. On the back side, you can kind of see it highlighted. There's a bolt right here. It's a 14 millimeter for me. Some people have claimed that they have 13 millimeters. Mine's a 14 millimeter. So we're just gonna use that socket with the 14 millimeter on that drain plug to undo it. First things first, we're gonna actually hop up back into the bay. Since we are in a clean garage with no debris or anything, we're actually gonna open up this oil filler cap to let the air pressure drain out as we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this and get some air pressure going, and then we're gonna have a easier time. Oops, sorry, that was a little bit stuck there. What we're gonna do is just leave that something like that so that way air can flow into it. Maybe a little bit, maybe just up like that. That way air can flow into it. We won't be fighting the air pressure. And then we're gonna take a 14 millimeter and we're gonna undo that. One of the tips that kind of comes in when you're doing this is you can see that I have my oil drain a little bit close. You wanna go pretty far back. When you undo your oil, it's actually gonna shoot out about a couple inches, maybe 10 to 12 inches away from it. Make sure that you have an oil pan big enough that's gonna catch that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a socket, some gloves, and then we're gonna make sure that this thing doesn't get all over the nice clean garage. Now, as I said before, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 14 millimeter. I broke this free already, but you're gonna do this. It's gonna be really, really tight. You're just gonna wanna get this off. And as soon as you start undoing it, you're gonna see that the oil is just gonna kinda shoot out everywhere. So just be prepared, wear gloves, make sure you have a clean surface or a, at least a surface to catch it. And we're gonna go ahead and dump all that out. As you can see, it's kind of shooting about seven inches or so. So make sure that you have enough room. Make sure that you keep your drain plug. You're gonna reuse this. And we're gonna go ahead and let this drain out. It's gonna be a couple minutes. Should take just a few. Since we have that air pressure helping us out on the top, we're gonna let this go ahead and drain out. I'm gonna go ahead and climb back up. You can see the oil is used. It's a good thing we're changing it. it does not look that good. So it's been about seven months, I think this car has been in there. I don't go off of mileage range. Most people do about 4,000 miles, 3,500 miles, somewhere around there. I don't do that because this car really doesn't surpass those milestones as it should. Um, this is a 2000 and it just barely hit 50,000 miles just the other day, actually. So really I go off of a time frame, kind of whenever it goes, usually I go every six months or so, I try and change it out. Um, I highly recommend if you guys do daily drive your Celicas to watch it, do it about every 4,000 to 5,000. Um, I used to do mine at 3,500. Sometimes they can go a little bit longer. I plan for my daily driver to go at 3,500. Usually it ends up happening every about 4,500 or 4,000 by the time I get time to actually do it. 
but that is just something to look out for is make sure you keep tabs on it write it down and make sure you either use your trip a or trip b monitor on the cluster or something just check it out make sure you guys keep updated so looks like this is about done we'll see we're gonna let this drip up and clean out as we let that drip out i'll show you guys just uh here's your drain plug my oil was okay um wasn't the best quality i've ever seen it in wasn't the worst quality i've ever seen it in either uh, i definitely needed a change like i said before i have not changed the oil since i did the supercharger project so it's probably good to do so uh, we're letting that drip out just there and this is nothing to be concerned about one thing to check in here is uh check and make sure that you guys aren't getting like oil or sorry water in your oil um it'll make it a very weird texture similar to this i'll put an image in right there yeah you want to make sure that you're not getting anything funky in your oil or anything like that looks like we're all good on this end what we're going to do is once this sits for a little bit it's still trickling out once that gets sits and, and stops doing that um we're going to go ahead and just reinstall this drain plug in nice and tight so i'm going to go ahead and let that sit and then reinstall this bolt with our drain plug reinstalled and tightened up to a good spec not too tight that we can't get it off next time but tight enough to not leak we're going to come up to the front where our oil filter is at now mine is right up in there i'll switch over to the other side so you guys can see it a little bit better we're gonna go ahead and take this thing off moving to the front side here you guys can see that there is the oil filter right there i think currently right now it's just a fram yeah i think i have a fram one just from walmart we're gonna change that out to a toyota oem one basically the fram ones are nice because they have this little grip thing at the bottom i like to use a like a pipe wrench um one of the rubber ones with the straps just to get it off some of these with the grips you can take off by hand some of them you need an oil filter uh, cap wrench that kind of sits on the outside and, and allows you to turn it off. Whatever the case is, whichever wrench you use, this is what you're going to end up having to do. Um, you're going to have to just take it off. So uh, mine, I'm going to use a pipe, the uh, rubber pipe wrench to start it and then I'm just going to do it by hand. And you guys are going to notice that I was a dummy. I took off my gloves just to, uh, to answer a quick text message and totally forgot to put them back on as I took that oil filter off. Again, there's going to be a ton of oil that comes out. Um, just throw it in your, your bottom part. You can throw that away later and clean it off. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and go get a towel and then uh, clean myself up so I can uh, put that new filter on. Now we're kind of making moves here. So the oil filter is off on the, the bottom part there. So we're going to go ahead and take our new oil filter here and we're going to open it up and most importantly, take a glove. You're gonna take a new bottle of oil, and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna get your fingertip wet with some new oil and run it on the rim of this oil filter. And what that, that's gonna do is it's gonna help generate a better seal. Just make sure you do it that way. It kinda helps out and lubricates this filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and lay a nice bead around the uh, section where we're gonna go ahead and install which is this section right here so basically what i'm gonna do is dip my finger in here run it along the rim right here and then install it up into that pan and you guys may wonder why i label my oil uh celica versus everything else is actually because um we do buy this stuff in bulk from like costco and what ends up happening is we get about 60 bottles of oil that just kind of sit on a shelf and we wait to do oil changes and so sometimes you tend to forget you grab something really quick but we're using 5w30 full synthetic what I did was I placed a little bit of oil in here in this cap so that way I can stick my finger into it, get some on there. And what we're going to do, we're going to take off, we took off the protective plastic that was on these OEM ones and we're just going to run a bead of oil around this gasket that's right here. And that's going to help generate a nice seal with the oil pan. So we're going to go ahead and be pretty liberal with this and get it all there. And what we're going to do is we're going to spin that filter right back into that same spot that we were up in. I'm gonna go ahead and get that in there right now. Now I know it's dark, but as you guys can see, the new Toyota OEM filter is right here. It's plugged in. We put that uh, lubrication out on the outside. We hand tightened it. Um, basically, I used my pipe wrench again <laughs> just to, to finalize it up. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's pretty stuck on there. If you guys are wondering what part I use for this, this is the same for the GTS and the GT. Um, basically, our part number right here is 90915YZZF2. So they sell these at Walmart. I think this one was like $8 or something like that. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to turn up yeah, yeah. to here now. Uh, 
the 2cc motors hate funnels it's kind of funny they they kind of suck at it but what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and run our oil into here we're going to do about it's four and a half quarts give or take depending on how much sat in there so i'm going to go ahead and take the quarts that i have dump them in there and then i'll show you guys uh what we're working with as you guys can see i just removed my dipstick completely cleaned out now we're going to go ahead and lay that in there and we'll go ahead and add it quart by quart and I'll show you guys exactly how much is going to go in there. It should be about four and a half. Uh, I always purchase five just to be extra, just in case uh, we have it. But I'm going to go ahead and start filling her up. All right, guys. So. We loaded in about four or five quarts in there. Uh, I think it was right about just over four. You saw me put that last little bit in there. Uh, basically, we just ride that out and uh, let it sit. One thing that you want to do is you want to make sure your car is now jacked down if you can. Get that oil level back down. And basically, you're just going to pull out your dipstick. You're going to take a look at it and see. It should have been empty from before. And right now, we're at about half. If you can see that the oil's right about there, right below the little dot. Once we run this car out and get the oil flowing, it's gonna drop down just a little bit. So next thing to do is just go ahead and turn on your car. Let it start and let it run for about three minutes. Make sure that that drain plug is back in the back. Make sure that your uh, top seal cap right here is closed and then start your car and let it run for about three minutes. Okay, as you guys saw, we just ran the car for a little bit. What we're gonna do now is I've already done it, but you're gonna go ahead and take your dipstick out, you're gonna clean it off, and then you're gonna recheck it. So what we did was we wiped this off, we reinserted it back in. I don't know if you guys can see that. The glare is pretty hard in this dark area. Let me see if I can flip it over. We're right over the first dot, about midway to the second dot, which is right where we need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that good. And that is how you're gonna change your oil on one of these cars. Everything you need to do is just in reverse now. All you need to do is put on your splash guards again, put on your front end, and hopefully that helps you guys out if you guys need to change your oil. I want to thank you guys for watching. Take it easy.